So the story of Priceville is the story of a black township in the 1830s in Ontario that has been forgotten. Priceville was a small town in Ontario that was established in the 1830s by African-American settlers um, who had, some of whom had fought alongside the British in the War of 1812, and they were granted uh, the rich arable lands uh, in the northern part of Upper Canada for having done that. Some years after the African-Americans had arrived uh, and had started tilling the land and um, you know, establishing a homestead, settlers from, I guess, the British Isles uh, arrived as well and were wanting to establish uh, homesteads in the same area. And so there was a kind of um, conflict uh, that broke out uh, over who was able to make claims on the land. Essentially, it was deemed that the black settlers, um, their land had been neither, um, it was not legally charted uh, or legally assigned. And so it was, in the end, uh, deemed that they had no claim to the land. And so they were forced off of their homesteads um, on which they had tilled the earth. They had sort of done all of this very difficult work of establishing lives uh, and they were being forced out. Uh, they ended up leaving um, the area uh, and everything that they had built ended up being sort of taken over by the new settlers. Having had to leave behind all that they had built for themselves. Uh, this unfortunately included having had to leave behind their dead. So having had to leave behind their graveyard, uh, which was kind of central uh, in their township. And because the land on which their graveyard lay had not been designated for internment, uh, there was nothing that they could do uh, when the new settlers started kind of dismantling the, the gravestones and um, essentially building a whole new life over that, that same land. There's a wonderful documentary called Speakers for the Dead done by a brilliant, brilliant filmmaker called Jennifer Holness. And she interviews um, a man who was quite young at the time. And he talks about how, as a boy, when they would play, uh, Baseball in the local diamond, they used to call the home plate Maggie uh, because it was marked with the name Margaret. We played ball over at the schoolyard and uh, we used one for home plate. Yeah, the name was on too. Oh, yeah, pitch it to Maggie. Yeah, yeah, we used to say that. I think it was Margaret. And he concludes that that was likely one of the headstones from the Black Cemetery, which is quite shocking. There was a real schism in terms of uh, some of the townspeople wanting to form a committee to essentially find out where the graves were exactly, um, how many there were, and reconsecrate the land. Uh, and then you had a segment of townspeople who uh, were quite against this. And so there was, it sounds like there was quite a bit of conflict over uh, what should be done. They did eventually find uh, some headstones within this pile of rocks um, and ground probing radar discovered that there were about 100 graves um, on this land. I think the story isn't so well known, probably for various reasons. Um, I think that there can be a kind of suppression of marginalized histories, um, especially ones that are so, you know, dark and contentious uh, that we kind of don't want to confront. And, um, you know, I, I suppose I can understand that intellectually, but that that's, you know, that's a shame um, because this is ultimately a Canadian uh, history uh, that, that we all share. And, that, and that's the reason why I think we should be speaking more openly about this or speaking more directly uh, uh, about it. Um, 
And by suppressing it, we're sort of, I guess, burying a, a part of our collective story that we, we need to confront.